Okay, so we're back at the farm. This is lesson five. Um, so what I'm going to do now is wet my board and uh, then we're going to go through the setting out just in front of all of those half round stretches and uh, we'll go through uh, four courses of uh, English and Flemish Bond. So the first thing I'm going to do obviously is just set my line up and remember what we said before if our work area is going to be in front of those you can see where my materials are so I'm going to be two foot away from there and then obviously I'm going to put my line up so two foot and this is where Now I have seen some students, when they come to, to do a long wall, uh, and they've, sometimes they've been told to do this as well, draw a line on the ground, on the concrete, um, for your um, frontage line. Now you wouldn't never do that on site, uh, one because you'll be on a, uh, more often than not, especially in England, a damp, muddy, tampered finish, I mean this isn't the, the best surface. Um, in workshops you have lovely nice smooth concrete floors and you can draw on them but you'd never do that out on site so we're not going to do it in the early stages and uh, the aeroplanes you can hear because it's such a lovely day is um, people doing their parachute jumps right so I'm going to wrap a line around a brick top just to weight it down like so and I'm gonna pull my line out to the other end and just make sure I'm two foot away from my materials Make sure your bricks are both further back than where your wall's going to be, just so you don't have to move them again. Two feet away. Touch. That will do. So this is where my wall's going to be. So now, next thing we're going to do is dry bond. So, just dry bond. If we do 10 bricks, then um, the English bond obviously is going to work out, and so will the Flemish bond because um, I want to do just two courses of English bond just to go through English bond with you. Then I'm going to take them up and I'm going to do Flemish bond because. I want to build a wall here that's going to stay here for a little while and uh, I prefer it to be in Flemish bonds so we'll just set out the first course of English end was our high end so this this being the high end up here is where we start if 
we were to start this end and say for example the the other end there was uh, more than 10 mil out of level then what we'd end up doing is we'd end up having to cut those ones to get the first course level so we start at the highest end and it just means that this end will have a slightly bigger bed but the first course will be level so when you're in the workshop you can obviously gauge to the ground on your highest end and that will be your gauge point but you'd never be able to gauge uh, to the ground on this one because obviously the ground will be out of level but you should be able to gauge off the top course because we're going to aim to get the first course level so a quick recap highest end that's where you start get that gauge and transfer your level to the head now we haven't got a long straight edge with us today so what we're going to have to do is we're going to lay that one and then we're going to lay one in the middle and then we'll turn the level around again to get this one right so we'll just transfer what we call transfer the level to that point there okay so that'll be what we'll do next into our line so we're now going to transfer that level to a brick in the middle and then to that one Spin your level round. I'll explain why I do that as soon as I've laid this one. The reason I spun the level over is because if this level um, we'll say was like two mil out of level in the length of it, if I just started that end and then just moved it along and just kept moving it along, every time we moved it, it would be at another two millimeters out. So if I sort of like moved it three times, I'd be six mil out when I get to the other end. Whereas if you do that and then swap it round, then this end will be the same uh, level as the, the far end as well. So you keep two mil down, level again. Spin it around, two mil down, and then level again. So that's the reason for spinning the level. And if, if you've got a straight edge, you use a straight edge underneath. If you're doing longer distances, you do it down the same because your straight edge might be out. So each time you do it, you uh, counteract any. Um, discrepancy that you might have with your level or your straight edge. So now that we have established both ends as being level, what we're now going to do is put the line up. And the way I put the line up is like this. Just 
get a brick, put it on there, lift your line up and then pull your line that way so you can see that the line is tight underneath that brick and it's level on there. Do exactly the same at the far end and then your line is going to be level all the way through. So I'll do that and then we'll run the first course through. because obviously I'd like to work that way. One thing I'm going to point out with these bricks is you have a lovely sharp arras on one side and the other side in the mould is a bit rounded. Now that can make your joint and up look a little bit terrible sometimes. So I'll always check and make sure if the face is clean enough that I lay the nice crisp sharp square edges as my face and leave the rounded ones if you can see I don't know if you see it on the camera really, but that's a lovely crisp arras, and that one's a rounded one. So I always keep that at the back. Remember over the line, thumb away. And as we did in the previous lessons. tipping technique we do just to keep that looking upright. Right, we know that we have perp joints or if you're American, head joints. We know that we have a bed joint, and now that we're going to one brick thick walls, English and Flemish bond, we have that joint in the middle there, which is called a collar joint. Now the collar joint, in the next uh, couple of minutes, uh, you're gonna see me laying the back course, so the collar joint can give us one or two problems. So we just wanna make sure that we um, learn we have to do to make sure that when we lay the back ones we don't push the front ones out so what I will do just for the first course I will lay uh, where are we there lay the back of this end and I'll do the far end as well put the line across and then run them through and you'll see me uh, doing the collar joint now the collar joint I always fill in afterwards. So I'm going to lay the back, <coughs> excuse me, the back with just perp joints. But obviously I want the right distance because if you do make your collar joint too big, say for example you had a collar joint that was like that, then when you come to lay your head of course, you could find that you have like ridges like this. Now the bricks do vary in size, but we can do the best we can to try and get the back looking fairly flush. The front will always be plumbed up and have a good face plane and you should always be able to plumb up anywhere along the face but because bricks vary in size you are going to get a few little um, bumps and gaps in there but we want to try and make it look as good as we can so that is all dependent on what we do with this collar joint. Okay, so we're now going to do that. So on the 
first one, I'll always just put a part of a collar joint on really because uh, that makes it easy to squeeze up to make sure that when I um, get the header on top that uh, I've got enough adjustment just by doing it. So if I was to put a whole um, collar joint on, I find that um, it takes a little bit of um, effort to try and get it where, where you really want it to go. So, just holding the front, I'm just going to wiggle it as such. Now before I do any cleaning up and leveling, I want to make sure that I'm happy that that is like a brick distance away. So just feeling there, I can look down there and that feels pretty good. So that is what I want. So now, I just want to level across. Lovely. Lovely. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same at the far end. And before I do too much, I just want to make sure that that edge is square with the front as well. Because if I was to lay that one too far back, then obviously when I plumb up off there, this isn't going to be square. So I've got to make sure that that is square across there. So I'll go get the square after I've done the far end and I'll sort that one out as well. So don't put a 10mm perp on your closure. But if you put a 10mm perp on there, and then a 10mm perp on there, you can see that straight away we've got 55 there and only 40 there. So we've got 15mm out of quarter bond straight away. So what I tell my students, and even I do this, um, it was only last week when I was doing some nine inch work. This closure should be 46 mil, and with a joint there and a joint there, it should be 66. Now, this normal brick is only 65, we're only a millimeter difference. So, I put that in like that, make sure I lay this one tight up to it, and then I'm going to be bang on quarter bond. And then once I've laid the course, I come back and then I will lay this in there. Now, your perps might be about eight mil, but because that is a smaller brick, I generally think it looks much better to have a slightly smaller perp joint on there anyway. I never think that a 10 mil joint song closures look right. So uh, this is what I always do. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just lay two bricks here and then I'll lay the stretches on top again and um, I think that will be enough for us uh, on the English bond we'll go over to uh, Flemish bond after that so let's just do this I do need to wet my mortar up again the sun is really drying us up the sand isn't really as soft as I'd like it. It's a bit gritty and drying up very quick. So when I do my header course I will lay a normal bed as I would normally for like a stretcher and then come back with my brick and the back and I would lay that exactly the same but just like so at the back and then 
we now, if we keep that tight and that tight, which is nice because that leaves us enough room to put a level either side. So we can level and level. So we'll go down a touch more. And then face play. And then do the same. time I lay the header in the wishbone I'm always looking, always conscious that I want to make sure that that one is centre of there and I'm always looking at that distance and that distance as well because like I said just a couple of mil if you're a couple of mil then you're going to be four mil out it's really really difficult to um to keep that uh, running true court bond say about this is if I was to put this in and then just bang it down the mortar is going to want to push that end brick off so if you go backwards and forwards any mortar comes out the ends always double check what you're going to do there as well and the last little bit I will always just tap it down and I'm happy double check happy two quarters on the corner of our English bond. I said I'd just lay one more and uh, I'll be pretty much out of mortar by the time I lay this one. And the next uh, one I mix up I will mix up a little bit better I think. bond and making sure that we do keep quarter bond. Uh, just before we change this water Flemish bond I uh, just want to show you uh, how I lay a header course. So what I will do, as I mentioned a little while ago, I'll put like a normal bed down as I would for a stretcher 
same at the back and just chamfer the back of that. And then get a nice clean crisp looking header. Put my perp on like this. my perp and then I go back to where I am but don't come back empty handed bring a little bit more there and then hold the middle tap it down and like I said we are looking for this four all to be in line again and what I tend to do is I will drag a level along the back each time I lay one just to keep the backs right. So again, I've just put a little bit more muck there so when I come back with the next brick, I'll bring muck to do this as well. So I'm always keeping ahead of myself on the beds. So, find a nice crisp Aris header bit more for the back. Wiggle it down, hold it in place, hold the middle, tap it down, clean it off. But as I emphasize as well, make sure that you're always keeping quarter bond. So you want to be sure that each time your eye is making sure that they are looking central. One more. And then I'm going to change this to 